Remember when everybody said, oh, if only we could get rid of Trump, we could go back to our precious norms, the civility, all that stuff that they valued so much. Now, I never bought, we, quite frankly, we were never that civil. I always liked his authenticity, but that was a major rationale that the fake news and so many Democrats had against him. It was all phony because now that he's no longer president, things are uh, off the charts weird when it comes to civility. Who knows who Kirsten Sinema is, the Democrat senator from Arizona. Now, quite frankly, she's okay in my book. She is not on board with this $3.5 trillion nonsense of a bill, all right? She is uh, not signing up for that. So she's getting harassed in the bathroom. Okay, I'll be back. Sit down, we want to talk to you real quick. We want to talk to you real quick? Hi, actually, I am heading out. But um, right now is a real moment that our people need in order for us to be able to talk about what's really happening. We need a Build Back Better plan right now. Okay. All right. She's about to go in the bathroom. I'm going to take you in there because they went in there. But you know these guys are kind of phonies. The guy says, we need a Build Back Better bill right now. Who the hell? Who says Build Back Better other than Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and people who live in Washington, D.C.? Nobody says Build Back Better unless you're in the nasty game of Democrat politics. What happens next? We knocked on doors for you to get you elected. And just how we got you elected, we can get you out of office if you don't support what you promised us. We need 7 million citizenship for 7 million. We need the Build Back Better plan right now. This is one of the reasons why I guess I'm never running for public office. Look at how they treat you. And this is okay. She is, forgive me, in the toilet right behind the stall, and she's being harassed. And by the way, this isn't actually funny. Really bad things can come from situations like this. But next, please. We need to hold you accountable to what you told us, what you promised us that you were going to pass when we knocked on doors for you. It's not right. No job is worth this, huh? Getting harassed in the bathroom. By the way, did you notice that she's a survivor? Everyone seems to be a survivor these days. Also, uh, we knocked on doors for you. Nobody does that anymore, all right? That's dangerous. They send out email blasts. These people aren't legitimate. I want to show you what Joe Biden said about all this, by the way, though. It was very, very insensitive and possibly dangerous. I don't think they're appropriate tactics, but it happens to everybody from... The, the only people it doesn't happen to are people who have Secret Service standing around them. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's part of the process. Part of the process, part of the process. He has Secret Service standing around him, but protection and security for members of Congress is a real thing, or maybe it should be a real thing. I remember it was briefly a real thing after Gabby Giffords, Democratic congressman from Arizona, was shot and nearly killed in early 2011. You remember that? I bet Joe Biden does not remember that. This is actually serious stuff. Yeah, you know, the bathroom is kind of ridiculous, but nobody should be treated like that. Uh, and those who are taking those images, uh, let's show you their pictures. Um, hmm. All right. Now, two of them identified as people of color. I happen to notice that uh, Senator Cinema is a white person. Can you imagine for a moment, imagine for a moment if the roles were reversed, okay? If this were, say, white men um, giving a hard time to a person of color, female or male, who was an office holder, that would be, yeah, you know it. I obviously am very concerned about the rise of extremism and extremism related to white supremacy. The FBI has warned repeatedly that domestic terrorism fueled by white supremacy is the number one threat to the United States right now. White supremacy. Is, is the biggest bucket of concern when it comes to uh, domestic terrorism. Terrorism from white supremacy is the most lethal threat to the homeland today. Total lie, total joke um, for political purposes. Where is all the white supremacy? Where is the right wing violence? Look for it. Can you find it? 
There are about six white supremacists out there, possibly somewhere, believing in that utter garbage. That's about it. They play it up for political reasons and political reasons only. Now, all this rhetoric, of course, what happened last summer, uh, glorifying Black Lives Matter and saying white supremacists were around every corner, that led to defund the police, defund the police, and talk about a threat to our way of life. This is having a real impact, a real world impact. This isn't some theory on Facebook. This is a real thing. Lives are being lost because of defund the police. Take a look at uh, Austin, Texas. Beautiful city, uh, but listen to what's happening there right now. The city of Austin has hit a gruesome new milestone. Austin police are investigating its 60th homicide of the year. That's the most in the 61 years that Austin police have kept records. Tough news tonight. Austin hit a record number of homicides over the weekend. And of course, you know, there are still three and a half months left in the year. 75. And they already hit their record. Austin, 61 homicides. That's a city of a million. Three months or so left in the year. This is off the charts bad. And guess what they did? They removed more than $100 million in the budget for their police department. That is a direct result of the nonsense that we saw last summer that still people celebrate. Celebrate the Black Lives Matter movement, the peaceful protests, all the rioting, all the disaster. No, these were peaceful protests, mostly peaceful protests. They all say that on the left. They even say that in the military. And we should all be proud that the vast majority of protests have been peaceful. Obviously, totally absurd. The conversation about race is absurd in this country. We're having a silly one to avoid a serious one. And here's another example of silly. Uh, hey, Denzel Washington is a great actor. I've always liked him. He's the tops in my book. Do you know who Ellen Pompeo is? Uh, she's an actress. I'm not that familiar with her, but uh, I guess they were on a project together. And Ellen Pompeo, for whatever reason, started to throw her weight around. Uh, she was a cast member. He was a director. She brought it up in her podcast not too long ago. Listen to what she says about Denzel. It's not nice, but it's not it's it's just not the worst thing I ever heard. So I get pushed up in the wheelchair and he's in a chair, and we're sitting across from each other. And I didn't really want to talk to this actor or see this actor before we did this scene. So I didn't have much interaction with him at all. And he wasn't looking at me in the eye. Again, we love actors who make choices, right? And I yelled at him, and I was like, look at me. When you apologize, look at me. And that wasn't in the dialogue. And Denzel went ham on my He was like, I'm the director. Don't you tell him what to do. And I was like, listen, mother, this is my show. This is my set. Who are you telling? Like, you barely know where the bathroom is. OK, I mean, again, I've heard worse. I don't see anything racist in that. Do you? Uh, maybe it was his first day on the job. What show was this anyway? So, uh, look, it wasn't nice. People say all kinds of things in podcasts, whatever. She didn't say anything about his ethnicity, his race or anything. Um, this is what the very bigoted crew over at MSNBC said out loud because Ellen Pompeo criticized 10 years ago Denzel Washington. I don't think she would have spoken to Clint Eastwood that way. I don't think she would have spoken to Martin Scorsese that way. I don't think she would have spoken to Debbie Allen that way. But Felice, you take it away. Uh, what do we make of this? I would agree with you um, with that. And Ellen Pompeo, so let me, let's start by saying what you're not gonna do is disrespect Uncle Denzel, okay? <laughs> you know, this is yes. a typical case of a white woman, white womaning, right? So we see the disrespect, we see the privilege. You absolutely showed your supremacy. You absolutely showed your privilege. Wow, she said that. She said a white woman, white womaning, a verb, a subject and a verb. What does that mean? Everybody on the panel was just fine with this. This is A-OK -okay over there on MSNBC. This is hate speech. This is horrible. If I said, I'm not even going to articulate a somebody woman doing, it's really, really bad. But this is the insane conversation we're having in America. Those kinds of comments are just fine. Riots are peaceful protests. None of it makes sense. They're trying to silence people 
who are rational. They are trying to hijack this conversation about race. Who's they? The far left. Be they white, be they black, be they whatever. They want reasonable people to shut up. They're very uncomfortable. Most people are talking about race. I suggest that <laughs> if you're a rational person, you have something to say, you gotta start having this conversation. You can't let it be dominated by people like that. I'll be right back. Newsmax, we're real news for real people. Millions are turning off the old channels and switching to Newsmax, the fastest growing cable news channel in America. No agenda, no spin, just the facts. Millions watch us, so can you. Newsmax, we are real news for real people. We thank you for watching Newsmax and uh, tell your friends we're very proud of what we're doing here. Have a good one.